out a really good subject that I could talk about, and that is how to perform a audit for your personal brand. I know the IRS performs audits that scares all of us business owners. I'm not talking about that kind of audit. I'm talking about a good kind of audit because a lot of you have set really ambitious goals with your personal brand. You want to publish a book. You want to do a podcast. You want to do a bunch of different things with it. But in order to get to that next level, you have to first be aware of where you're at, right? In order to change, you have to be aware of what you want to change. It's like if you want to lose weight, you need to be aware of how much you weigh and what your goals are. And it's the same thing with your personal brand. So I really want you to start to shift your uh, perspective on your personal brand and start treating it like a business that is making money and requires investments and times and delegation and all of that good stuff. So in order to effectively perform a personal brand audit, I'm going to use somebody as kind of a guinea pig, which I know he won't mind. I had a great conversation with him yesterday. His name is Alexander Stevens, and uh, I'll be auditing his own personal brand based off of Basic, what I would normally do with a client, to be frank, whenever I do a consultation with a client and talk to them about their highest value personal brand problems and uh, you know what ways they could improve their personal brand and map out the strategy, I always start with an audit, which is a really great way to show them all of the cracks in the foundation. And then I, as the professional, can say, all right, well, here's how we can solve them. So you're kind of getting an insider look into what I would normally do for a client. So this will be packed with a lot of value and I'll be very intensive with it. Okay. And uh, I would say if you have questions, drop them in the chat, but uh, I'm not doing this for a Q&A just yet. I'll do more of those in the future if you'd like. So first things first, what are we looking for? Number one, we need you to show up. Number two, we need you to pay positioned as an expert, as an authority. And number three, we need you to look seamless. We need you to be omnipresent everywhere all the time. And we think about God and in the least sacrilegious way possible, your personal brand needs to be omnipresent everywhere all the time, across all the social media platforms, your website, across press, podcasts, everything. It needs to basically give somebody full confidence that if they're coming to your profile, this is the same exact person no matter what. That this is the individual that I was talking to the other day at the networking event. This is the podcast guy, the guest that I was listening to, or this is the person I shook hands with at lunch, right? And so you need to have number one, visibility. Number Number two, a concise marketing message. And then number three, you need to have a seamless personal brand, something that is omnipresent. Now, to start out with what this needs to look like at a high-end scale, I'm just going to use my own personal brand here. And I'm going to run a quick search. And you'll be able to see right now, uh, actually, once I share my screen, I'm not sharing it just yet. And done. There we go. All right. So let me just go to Google and type in Isaac Mashman, right? This is my name. Now, my name is relatively unique. You watching this might not have a name that is as unique as my own. So there might be a somewhat of a challenge there, which I'll walk through and give you a few ideas about uh, solutions there. But if you were to run a Google search, my knowledge panel is the first thing that shows up. So we have a bunch of photos of me. We have my Instagram, my age, my book. We have my LinkedIn profile, my website, my birth date, all of this rich information. Now, what is a Google knowledge panel? A knowledge panel is Google's form of verification, so to speak. And it is the one thing that um, Google does for notable people or entities that increases the credibility. You know, a couple of years ago, people would pay $10,000 to get verified on Instagram and now they get the checkout for free. Well, Google Knowledge Panels is kind of similar. A lot of times people will try to pay some backdoor person to create a panel. That's not how it works. Google Knowledge Panels need to be influenced. Now, this is an in-depth training on the subject matter, but if you work with me, I'll be able to kind of guide you through some of those steps that would improve the likelihood that you could get a knowledge panel for yourself. Really important stuff. But I have my website as the first result ranking one on the page, and just a ton of information pertaining to me. There is no question, no doubt that it is me, right? One of one. We have a press article, IMDB, Twitter, uh, or X, and then latest post, which this is a newer feature from Google. So now my Twitter post, my Instagram post, I think my threads will probably show up here. It's just really awesome because it compiles all this information. You could go to the second page, and it's the same exact thing, more information, more links. Now, you will not get here overnight. This has taken me years to do, but the beautiful thing about doing it myself is now I have a strategy on what I can do to help you out, right? And so again, more press, more press, more press, more photos. And I could literally click 
um, on the 10th page right here, and there's still going to be information about me, okay? So this is what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for visibility. Now, in terms of a marketing message, let me go back to the first page here and click on, let's just go ahead and go with my Instagram account. If you were to read this, and you notice how this bio reads vertically, Facebook bios read horizontally. Keep that in mind. And you have 101 characters to come up with a marketing message. So looking at my bio, I have a personal hook, addicted to coffee and standards, okay? Now, I created a macroscopic strategy called identity positioning earlier this year. And this is proprietary. And what it does is it takes the personal attributes and characteristics of a person, and it ties that into their professional career to where they are positioned as an authority, but also has that emotional connection, that rapport that can be built. I, I mean, how many YouTubers do you follow and subscribe to and you don't even know their first name, which means that next time another person comes along that has a video that might be more entertaining, you have no loyalty to that previous brand, but you very seldom forget celebrities. You very seldom forget first and last names. And so you need to have an emotional hook and the professional marketing message, and that so, so that brings a person in that establishes a degree of trust, a degree of rapport, right? And so it gives them a reason to where, for example, if you were a lawyer creating a marketing message and you say, I help law firms X, Y, and Z, or I help clients do X, Y, and Z, okay, cool, you look like every other lawyer. But what if you said avid outdoorsman and father of five, I help X, Y, and Z client with X, Y, and Z case. Now, somebody going to the profile can connect with you and think, oh, this, is, this lawyer is an outdoorsman and he's a father. This is a good guy. This is a good dude. I'd much rather support a family-based business. I'd rather support a family man, right? And so personal hook, professional marketing message, very successful, you know, bio. So addicted to coffee and standards, businessman, author, investor, speaker. And then right here is the professional hook, which is I help public figures scale their personal brands. Now, I was limited for time, or not time, but for space. It was previously, I help public figures optimize and scale their personal brands. And on Facebook, it's a little bit different too, which I'll go over. But then here on my profile, I have my highlight section filled out. I have pinned posts. I have quotes. I have photos. I have reels. These are This is a collaborative post on a podcast I did. This is a filled out optimized profile. And yours will eventually need to be the same. The other thing about this is not only having a solid marketing message and visibility with my personal brand, I also have the same exact handle across the board. If you were to go to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube or LinkedIn or even go to my website, it is all going to be the same. And if you cannot get your name, right, you cannot get, let's say your name is, uh, I had somebody I worked with, he did a, a lot of engineering for Jelly Roll, and his name is Tristan Roberts, and he wasn't able to get anything for Tristan Roberts, but then we incorporated his middle name, Tyler, and so he now goes by Tristan T. Roberts, which I always use this for client examples. This is a search for Tristan Roberts, and since then, since my conversation with him, we have a representative now. Okay. Great. So you're not going to be able to fight a political figure for visibility, but you just keep scrolling and scrolling and he shows up nowhere. And I told him it would be a battle that he would probably lose. So Tristan, why don't we go ahead and use your middle name and look at that. He's the number one result. He got his website. He has sound better profiles and just a bunch of really cool information here. And so you know, if your name is John Doe, you're never going to be able to get John Doe as a domain, as a handle or anything. So what you can think about doing is buying your middle name, so incorporating it here. So it's John Z Doe. Let's say your name, your middle name is Zachariah. So it's johnzdoe.com and at John Z Doe as your handle. Or if you were to use your full name, it would be John Zachariah Doe, right? And you use that and it would increase the chances of you being seen. And so that means if you write a book, it's your author name. If you get on a podcast, you get introduced as John Zachariah Doe. So you need to start thinking about these things yourself. And the other thing that I can mention as a, an alternative strategy is you need to start thinking about buying and getting your own domain and your own website. You can use the tool like GoDaddy, which is great. You can also use Ionis, which I use. It's a German-based company. And uh, these are the things that you know, again, visibility, a solid marketing message and a seamless brand that's the same across the board is going to help you be positioned as a public figure and as an authority and somebody to be trusted. Because let's be frank here, 
there are 4 billion people on the internet and that number is increasing. And then as Africa and India continues to scale and get more globalized, we're going to see even more influencers coming out of the wet or coming out of the East. And you have everybody and their brother trying to make money and their grandmother literally do fitness videos. So you need to do everything in your power to cut through the noise. And that's where the positioning aspect comes in. And if you're watching this, I would also recommend you go to academia and you read this paper right here. Uh, this would be very, very insightful for you. And it goes into details about identity positioning and what you can do to be that public figure yourself. Now, to continue with this example here, on Instagram, you see I have this profile image. Let's go ahead and head over to LinkedIn here, and you'll notice, uh, you know, notice something here. And every platform is slightly different, but it shares the same characteristics. It has the header, the bio, the marketing message, the work experience, the profile picture, right? And then LinkedIn, for example, gives you a bunch of other space for volunteer experience and resumes and featured things. And it's really cool. But regardless, my profile here looks very similar to my Instagram profile as I have my company, a similar marketing message. So again, it's seamless. It is omnipresent. There's no question this is the same Isaac Mashman. Because again, if somebody was to go to, and your handle is, you know, at John underscore Doe, and then another profile is at John dot Z Doe, it makes it confusing and people are naturally lazy, which means you need to do everything in your power to make it easy and efficient for the people who are trying to follow you and support you. All right. So again, max and this is what you need to do and you know guys we're talking about doing a personal brand audit you need to do this sometime today and spend 30 minutes to an hour and go through and look at your personal brand and look at your marketing message look at your profiles look at your domain look at your links and ask yourself am i visible right run a google search of your name and see what shows up and then calculate your combined following all right. Understand how many people and how much reach you have. For example, I have, you know, 16,000 on LinkedIn, 5,700 on Facebook, and I have, you know, 2,200 on Instagram and 8.1 thousand on Twitter. And it's like, I know all of these numbers because that means that I can now calculate where I want to be and set those goals and set those targets for my personal brand moving forward. Again, we're trying to take you to a higher level here. We want to get you to be like the badass. We want to get you to be the number one expert public figure authority in your field here. So just something to think about that, okay? Now to go over and look at Mr. Alexander Stevens, which his last name isn't even Stevens, but I'm not going to disclose it until he makes the changes himself publicly. But let's go ahead and look at his profile, all right? So we have a header image here, which isn't bad, but I am actually against putting a bunch of text here. And the other thing is you see web design, graphic design, brand development, social media marketing, SEO, Google business manager, it's too much, right? So consolidating would be something very important on a professional note in order for him to be positioned better. And I had a conversation with him about this yesterday. I do particularly like the font though, this is signature. It's not a bad header image, but too much text is unappealing. If you do not have enough space with your marketing message and with all the other pieces of text fields to tell the person who you are, come on now, you need to evaluate what you have going on. He has a great profile photo. Right? We're auditing his Facebook profile right now, and then we're going to take a 30,000 uh, 30, foot view and actually look at his, uh, his personal brand as a whole. He has a really solid uh, profile picture. I'd recommend you maybe zoom it in a little bit. It is high quality. You can partly see the whites in his eyes, which again, that's what you need to do. Just like you're at Gettysburg or the Battle of Bunker Hill or whatever, you need to see the whites in the enemy's eyes, right? Or the, the, uh, you know, your prospects, your followers need to see the whites in your eyes because they don't want to see a photo of your dog. They don't want to see a photo of a cartoon. They don't want to see a photo of you zoomed out and it's some wide action shot. Use your header image for that, right? Use your header image for those action shots. Use your profile photo for the high quality corporate headshot even, all right? And then we can see the boss of personal brand design. This was different than yesterday. Yesterday, he said the digital plumber, he took my advice and he will see results because of this. And he said the boss of personal brand design because he runs a design company and he focuses on web development and social media and brand guide. And so I said, why don't you pivot from businesses and focus on personal brands and work with trainers who don't have websites, right? It's a really solid piece of advice. And so really exciting to see this. But the thing that he is missing is a personal hook, a personal hook. Now, I know that he's worked with Warner Brothers and Fox Studios and a bunch of these other things. So he could say something along the lines from, 
from corporate designer to uh, to nerdy, you know, stay at home dude. What, whatever. Like we would take some time, take a personal hook, and I, I don't know enough about him to know those personal characteristics just yet. But that's why on a call we would go through and find that. So whether you have an interest in the outdoors, you're a collector of old vintage vinyls, you love movies, you're a nerd, you're a Lord of the Rings fan like I am, you're addicted to coffee, right? Addicted to coffee and standards. That office coffee is horrible, by the way. Bring your own. Um, I need to get some 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 high quality coffee for MCG's headquarters. But regardless, you have that personal hook, and then you say the boss of personal brand design. So what you could say is that I help personal brands create websites and seamless social media content. Something along those lines, which explains exactly what he does. And you start your marketing message with I help, because that denotes a sense of giving. You want to help that person. You want to give them something. And so I help X, Y, and Z get X, Y, and Z results because how many of you have seen the coaches and all of those people that are like, I coach people and help business owners add an extra $30,000 in revenue in 30 days. Okay, number one, that's an income claim. The FTC looks down on that and frowns on it. Number two, you have a guarantee. So that means that it helped, it, it will hurt your case in a law firm or a law case. And the third thing is you live like every other freaking coach on the internet. So what if you were to say, I help coaches improve their messaging and leverage organic marketing to drive sales, right? So it's a different take and you're still guaranteeing or promising an outcome, but you're not relying solely on revenue. And so you used to look a little bit different, right? Get crafty with it. Now, we also see his link is alexander.steven5. Okay, that's a problem. And if I was to run a quick search here and say, you know, Alexander... Man, I cannot spell today. Yeah, it's okay. Again. Let's look at Alexander Stevens, right? We have Alexander H. Stevens, a former vice president of the Confederate States of America. Well, that's not a good look, right? And this guy's uh, from, you know, the UK. But regardless, you see all of these high quality from, you know, government sites, history.com. He's never going to show up, right? Now, let's go ahead and imagine here that because Stevens is his middle name, let's go ahead and imagine that his last name is Wallace. So his name is Alexander Stevens Wallace. So let's go to GoDaddy. And then what I'm going to do here is number one, run a search for Alexander Stevens just to see what would show up. It's not going to be available. I guarantee you that, right? But now let's go ahead and incorporate the middle name and go Alexander S. Wallace. See, now his domain is available. Okay. And then if we were to go to Facebook and we look at Alexander S. Wallace, it's taken. Okay. So that's a problem because he's not going to be able to get this handle across every single platform. And these are the steps that I take my clients through. I go through just like I'm doing here. We see what will work. We see what will not work. And so let's go ahead and incorporate and see if Alexander Stevens Wallace, which is a very long name. So I might not say that you do that, but what you could go by is Alex Stevens Wallace. This is something you could do. Okay. The domain is, or not the domain, but the, uh, the actual profile link is available. And then what he could do is do Alex S Wallace. See if that's okay. Again, now we see somebody's there. Alexander S. Wallace goes back to this dude. So that means that we need to commit to something and get it the same across the board. So we can do Alex S. Wallace official. You incorporate the official here. So now you'd be able to get the link. So now the main thing is, and the main question is, all right, so what shows up whenever you search up Alex S. Wallace, see what shows up. We have this one guy who's the cycling guy that we just saw on Facebook a second ago. And we see this guy who is a representative from South Carolina. But regardless, the search results here aren't nearly as bad, right? We do have some competition, but you'd be more likely to show up here than you would if you didn't use your middle name. And if we were to go ahead and, you know, do Alex Stevens Wallace... 
can do that as an official thing. So now we go to Alex Stevens Wallace. I'm not seeing anything show up. So that means that if you were to go by Alex Stevens Wallace, which is a little bit of a name, it's it's you know probably a hyperbolic name, but regardless, you'd be able to start showing up and dominating the search results. So hey, today on stage we have Alex Stevens Wallace, the number one designer for personal brands, right? And that these are some of the early steps that you could take to position yourself. And then we go to GoDaddy, and we look at the name, and so we we search up Alex Stevens Wallace. And then the .com is going to be available so you could purchase this for your own domain. And then what you do is you go and leave Facebook and you go to, and you would have to use official at the end, right? Don't put official at the beginning of the link. People don't type in, you know, when they're running a search and they're they're not typing, you know, official, uh, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No, they're typing in Dwayne Johnson or The Rock. So I put the official at the end. It will help the algorithm. But now let's go to LinkedIn and see what shows up. It's not found, which, well, okay, actually made a mistake here because LinkedIn has the IN. So let me go ahead and search up and see if anybody has this. They don't. Okay, so that's a good sign. So now let's go to Instagram and then do Alex Stevens Wallace. See if they can get the handle. Great. So now you can create a seamless personal brand. You get the handles on every platform. You use the same profile image, use the same header, the same marketing message. And now you have not only visibility because you're showing up, you have a good marketing message because the personal and professional hooks. And then you have a seamless personal brand where there's no question about who you are. And then we could think about using press, using podcast interviews and all these other things. But guys, the thing that I want you to understand here is that you need to start positioning yourself as an authority in whatever field you want to be and everything else that you're doing are extensions of your personal brand. So for example, the fact that I'm a public speaker or the fact that I've written a book or that I'm a podcast host, those are extensions of my personal brand. They are incorporated with me, right? They're incorporated into who I am, but they are not me. And so you can leverage all these things to your advantage. And when you're talking to somebody, hey, you need to have an elevator and pitch and say, hey, What's going on? My name is Isaac Mashman. I run a consulting firm out of Little Rock, Arkansas, Mashman Consulting Group. And what we do is we specialize in helping emerging and established public figures optimize and scale their personal brands. Okay? You need to be on the same wavelength with whatever your profession is or whatever. If you want to be an entertainer or a comedian, well, hey, my name is John Doe and I am a comedian that you know, specializes in dark humor, right? You know, obviously, you don't use the term specialize, but I like to tell dark jokes. Okay, so your elevator pitch is something that needs to be concise and based off of your marketing message, you know, because in the scenario where I'm giving an introduction in front of a room or at a conference, I'd be like, man, well, number one, I drink too much coffee. And number two, I work with personal brands. And that'll lead that into a conversation and use humor and whatnot to break the ice and start having a conversation and building rapport on a personal note and a personal basis. And these are just some of the steps that you can use to perform a personal brand audit. And then after you do this, you need to think about, okay, what am I doing this for? What are my intentions here with building my personal brand? And one of the things that I would tell you is, number one, are you trying to make money, right? Drive revenue? Are you doing this for a mission because you care about something? You want to do it from a philanthropic standpoint? Or number three, do do it for vanity, right? You want to go ahead and get well-known and get fame because it feels good. Those are the three overarching reasons. And once you define your intentions, we can focus on the next steps. Because there are two reasons why people do not get started with their personal brands. Number one is they don't know why they're doing it and they're making the time investment, the money investment. And the second reason is they don't know how to get started. And the first step is exactly what I told you. Do an audit, look at what you have going on, get on social media, and then from there, start creating content in your field that you can, you know, use to market yourself and gain some organic traction and, you know, start promoting and getting out there to the world because obscurity is the enemy of success, guys. Obscurity is your enemy. So you need to do everything in your power to become well-known. And then you could be that number one web designer, the number one public speaker in a specific subject, the number one author on, you know, horror books. Like I say, who is the number one, you know, horror book writer? And you're going to immediately think Stephen King. He committed to it. And everything else that he's done in his life from his, 
random political tweets or speeches or whatever. They're extensions of his personal brand. But he had that one vehicle that opened up the door for everything else. And that's the same with my business and my life. I'm using Mashman Consulting Group as a vehicle for Mashman Properties and Mashman Investments. And we're podcasting and more traveling in my life. So it's like commit to one thing, use it to propel you forward. But your personal brand is going to be the thing that allows opportunities to start coming to you to where you can attract those opportunities rather than having to, uh, well, search them out all the time yourself. That's exhausting. So guys, I hope that this step-by-step walkthrough of performing a personal brand audit was very helpful, very insightful. Again, you look for number one, visibility, number two, a good marketing message, and number three, a seamless personal brand, right? Omnipresence. Those are the three things you need to do to, you know, to, to do this audit. Combine your audience, calculate where you're at, define where you want to be, and then start reverse engineering solutions or reach out to me, hire me, and I can work with you to where you can save time, you could save money, and you could save face. All right? I'm here to be your partner. I'm here to help you. I'm here to be your consultant. I'm here to be that person who's building with you for the long term because, God, I tell you, Mashman Consulting Group will be the number one personal brand consultancy by the year 2035 or sooner, and we will have 500 consultants working for us. So, With that being said, much love. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I would love to get connected with you if we haven't already. All right. Isaac Mashman.